Let me know when you're ready. Ready? Yes. Okay. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Telfer Muse and the camp meeting of 2023. <clears throat> as we assemble together, as we look upon what we have all been looking to learn for the last several months, shall we ask our Heavenly Father for his guidance and his direction so that we may more clearly understand this which he has presented before us. Shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessings that you have provided. We thank you for the traveling mercies that we have all received. We thank you for these lessons and this guidance that has been coming forth from your word over these last several months. May your spirit guide us. May your angels attend us. Help us now to understand that which you would want us to understand for this time. Father, we ask for your blessing. We need your watch care. Hide us now behind your cross. Help us so that it is your character that others see that we may be able to share this message with others for this time in earth's history. Direct us now. Be with us, we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Now, <clears throat> several weeks ago, I noted that there had been a, a request that had come online. Now, this Facebook post was made on the 1st of November of 2018. This brother asked, the pri can someone share a list of prophetic numbers, please? And as was responded back in June, the primary symbols for this message are 3, 6, 7, 12, 13, 22, 77, 126, 153, 187, 217, 252, 264, 273, 391, 525, 777, 718, 813, 18720, etc. Other symbols arise with dates and numbers that apply to specific events, dates, but are witnessed to by many primary symbols. These numeric symbols cannot be used in the same way primary symbols are used. Now, <clears throat> the point and the premise for this meeting is that we are going to be looking at symbols and their relevance to us today. These symbols are being revealed not so that we may set time or predict time, but we are going to recognize how these symbols are impacting the message that we need to be giving at this time in Earth's history. This opening statement <clears throat> is to remind us that when this message was initially being given, and I'm speaking when the pre-Adventist Millerites were noting things, they relied upon specific information 
combined with the Bible. How many times do we find that Father Miller or others came through to say that they were relying upon the best chronologists or the best chronologers? Multiple times Mrs. White noted this. Multiple times we were being shown that there were items necessary for them to understand. Now, <clears throat> several years ago, there was an understanding that was brought to this message. And oftentimes we refer to this as Ezra 7, 9. Right? Mm -hmm. What is important for us to understand from Ezra 7, 9? Well, Ezra 7, 9 tells us that we're connected to Millerite history, that 457 BC is connected to Millerite history. Right? Now, <clears throat> As this was being presented, we have we have this. Waymark of the first day of the first month. Right? Now, as we would look at something like this, is this time setting? Are we recognizing that a symbol has importance for us? Now, throughout this, as we would as we would look at this in the Millerite history we would have nineteenth of April of eighteen forty four. Correct? Mm -hmm. Now <clears throat> we have here The midpoint, right? Well, the midpoint, you haven't drawn the other part to make it a midpoint of, yet. Of course. So if we come down here to make this a midpoint, we would have the 10th day of the seventh month. So in between these, we have this midpoint of the 21st of July. Now here, we would have a symbol. Again, What happened between the 21st of July of 1844 and the 15th of August of 1844? Did we not have Boston and then Exeter? Did we not show this as being midnight and this as being the midnight cry? Were these messages important within Millerite history. 
did they not show to the Millerites just as 11th of August of 1840 did the importance of their message? Now, how were they able to determine these dates? Is it dated this way in the Bible? Did they not come to an understanding of the Millerite calendars? Did they not come to an understanding of the biblical calendars and their import within this history? Now, <clears throat> here we have the first day of the first month. In the book of Ezra, this is important because this is the time in which Ezra left Babylon to return to Jerusalem. Correct? So here, what I found very interesting when we're looking at the biblical calendar the 15th of August of 1844 became the first day of the fifth month of that year. Were the Millerites on a journey very similar to Ezra? Are we not on a journey similar to Ezra at this time? Now, all of these dates here from a biblical calendar are important for us to recognize. All of these dates have been affixed in scripture, but we are coming to understand their importance by the study of chronology. So much of what has been being studied over the last several months has been being studied because the books of Judges, the book of Joshua, so many others are being opened as to their importance for this time in Earth's history. What we're going to be looking at throughout this week is going to be the different points that have come to light over these last several months. We're going to be looking to learn to use different tools and different applications so that we might more correctly understand the time in which we currently live. Now, As we, as we continue here, the only date that I have not placed a biblical date to is the 21st of July. And I believe it can be established that for 1844, It was the fifth day of the fourth month. Where do we find the fifth day of the fourth month being given reference within Scripture? Ezekiel chapter 1. Exactly. Ezekiel chapter 1. And what do we find in Ezekiel chapter 1? We have the vision of the wheels within wheels, but it is the vision by the river, by the river Chebar, right? Now, when we're looking at this, this vision becomes important for all of us to consider because this vision is the Mare vision. 
Now there's going to be multiple things that we're going to be looking at throughout this week as to how important these visions, this chronology, and these symbols are for us today. Now, today, consider the following. Here, of course, first day of the first month. Is it possible for us to consider this? Come on. Looking at this, do we have the application that we can bring this message from the first day of the first month as being the first angel's message? It would be a fractal or a wheel within a wheel, a cog within a cog. Right. It would be a a piece of the puzzle? Yeah, it, it's, it's a piece of information that fits with another piece of information. Okay. So, <clears throat> throughout all of this, over these last years, since 1989, we have had multiple times where we are seeing that we have been being instructed in the first and the second angel's message to be prepared for the third angel's message. Now, with this, We are given the breakdown where in the first angel's message we are told to fear God, give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him that has made heaven and earth all the seas. Right? God has made everything. In the study of chronology, we are able to establish waymarks. We are able to establish points <clears throat> that help us to understand more clearly exactly where we are at this time in Earth's history. All of these points established in the history are allowing us to know where we are standing today. Is any of this predictive of a future event? Are we trying to say that these things first must happen before we are to be prepared to give a message? Are we saying that a certain party is to be elected? Are we saying that certain conditions are to apply before these things happen? No. We are recognizing the symbols. We are recognizing that these are coming together to show us our point in this Earth's history. 
Now, behind me, we have the 1843 chart, and over here we have the 1850 chart. Both of these have been important for us to more clearly understand what the Bible says to us. We have many figures on this chart. All the way up in this upper right quadrant, we have multiple figures that have importance for us in understanding that which we are to know now. Here, again, we have multiple figures, but we are also being shown our relationship here in the lower left quadrant with God. Do we not wish to worship God in spirit and in truth? How are we to proceed at this time if we are not willing to be grounded as were the pioneers? <clears throat> now, Father Miller, multiple times, wrote for us words of wisdom. Do we not accept that prophets wrote more for our time than they did for their own time? Do we not agree with this? So when we are reading what was left for us by Ezekiel, by Daniel, by Father Miller, by Sister White, all of these are letters to us today. We need to be paying attention to what these letters have said. We need to understand where we are to be so that we may more clearly address with others the message for this time. This represented a journey to Jerusalem. Does this also not represent for us today the journey to the heavenly Jerusalem? Does this not show us that our steps today are being taken to prepare us to leave this world for the world to come. This is the premise that we're going to be looking at throughout this week. This is the premise that all of the speakers, all brothers and sisters, are going to be able to address. This is why we've gathered together. This is why we are approaching these solemn warnings carefully. Because our Heavenly Father wants us to understand what we need to know. He wants us to be prepared. He wants us to, to be <clears throat> directly ready for all that he would have us to do. Is he not showing us his great love at this time? Is he not showing us <clears throat> how much he wants us to be with him? Now, Multiple things have been being learned. I'm looking forward 
to learning much with everyone here. I'm looking forward to being able to address points for everyone's edification. I'm looking forward to being able to learn more from all of the studies that we participated in over the last several months. I hope and I pray that things are going to be presented clearly and directly so that everyone is going to have these benefits. Now, one of the other things that we need to keep in mind goes to a point that Mrs. White made multiple times. Do we have a new message? What message are we to be giving? The three angels message. Is the message that we are to give the same message that was given that brought them out of the churches from 1841, 42, 43, and 44? So if this is the message we are to be giving, in what manner are we to approach it? Right now, that message, based from what you're seeing here symbolically, was very direct. Father Miller was able to show the steps from Babylon to Medo-Persia to Greece and to Rome. His influence led to 300 others giving a message like this. And how far did that message spread? Did it not spread to the then known world? Was it not going all over? From a little company with Gideon, a great multitude was put to flight. One man, Elijah, stood on Mount Carmel. John the Baptist, the voice crying in the wilderness. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. 300 Millerite preachers giving a message in unity, recognizing the symbols, the dates, the chronology that was necessary to be understood. Are we not today in the same position as were these for their time? <clears throat> as we look at this, We're going to have multiple times through this week, especially in the morning sessions, for us to consider the chronology that has come to light over the last several months. We're going to have multiple times for us to look, to marvel, to understand what we are being shown. Each of these symbols, <clears throat> each of these wheels within wheels will be able to show us how we are going to be able to approach 
this message so that this no new message will again go through the world. What are we told will happen when this message begins to go through the world? Will we not see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit greater than what was seen at Pentecost? Will we not understand more clearly that which God would have us to know at this time? Is this not a reason for us to praise God? <clears throat> this is the purpose of this meeting. This is the reason that we have assembled together. Throughout the history that we have seen, there are those that choose to study, to apply themselves, so that they might be more of a help and an edification to other brothers and sisters throughout the world. We pray today that these meetings are going to be the type of blessing that are going to bring us closer together, that are going to offer us the understanding and the hope so that we might more clearly and directly approach our Heavenly Father so that His character is revealed even more unto us. Now, for those online, there will be multiple documents, references that are going to be able to be offered. For those later viewing this on YouTube, we hope to have these items posted and ready for viewing. Throughout this week, there's going to be certain points that I will be looking to address. There's going to be one day where I'm going to be asking that we take a test, that we show that which we have already learned. There are going to be some points from things that I have been learning from these studies that when they're presented might sound very strange. They might cause your ears to tingle. I invite people to join with us, whether they're going to be online, whether they're going to be here in this room. We ask for your prayers. We ask that if you have questions, to email us, put them in the chat. However, we're going to try to get to them as, as quickly as we possibly can. Now, as we go through this, <clears throat> we're going to be looking at symbols very much like this throughout this week. We're going to be looking to apply these symbols to see what we are able to glean from them
These are going to be open book revelations because we're not going to address anything except what we've already seen here. or what we see here. Have your charts ready. Be prepared because all of these are going to be important for us to consider. Now, Sister White has stated no new message. Does that mean that we are to give the message in the same way that the pioneers gave it? Or are we to rely upon the same rules and the same manner in which this message was developed by Father Miller. If chronology was how Father Miller came to understand the various points of his, pre of his presentations, should we not take a page from what he did to then have the same type of reliance to understand how important chronology is for us? Especially for chronology to be understood at this time. We are given the opportunity. We are given the ability to apply ourselves to learn. This is our challenge this week. Now, any questions about what's been presented here? Yes. Uh, the question is, <clears throat> why did you choose that rather than the whole line? As I was led to look at this, we have to have some place to start. There's going to be the opportunity for us to, to address, address the, the entire, entire line throughout, throughout this, this week. week. If we have a point where we can start, where we have agreement, we can build on the rest step by step. So can you put what Jeff would have placed on that line? Okay. okay. As, As in? Well, he had a line back in 2016 that used those four waymarks. So what did he mark? So it starts with... April 19th, the first day of the first month, is what way mark in our history? I'm not remembering. Well, we would put 9-11. Okay. And he's going to end always with... So you would have 9-11. And you would have the Sunday law. Yeah. So you would have here, of course, midnight, and you would have this as the midnight cry. Right? Right. When he presented that line. 
and you presented it without those, mm -hmm. and so people might thought thought that was odd. Okay. The first, second, third, and fourth angel. Right. right. But you can see that that's what Jeff was doing, even though we didn't realize it. Right. right. I don't know if they can hear me through these. Can they hear? Probably not really well. Okay, okay, so so repeat that. Okay, okay so, so the, the point, point that, that, that was being made in 2016, 2016 that 911 would be the equivalent of the 19th of April of 1844. In 2016, the recognition had been given that midnight, 21st of July of 1844, would have occurred. That the midnight cry, 25 days later, would have occurred on the 15th of August of 1844, and that for our time, that this Sunday law would then occur as the equivalent of, of 22nd of October of 1844. We're recognizing the fact that these points have been presented within our history. We're recognizing that 9-11 has occurred. That midnight and the midnight cry must yet occur before the Sunday law comes. So keeping this in mind, the question that I must now ask, is it possible that this meeting that we are holding this week is bringing us to midnight? On some line it is. On some line it is, yes. I, this line remains to be seen. Right. right. <clears throat> the point further in looking at this, we must have a better understanding of here, of the midnight portion of the fifth day of the fourth month for us to be prepared for the 10th day of the seventh month. Over these last many years, we have been <coughs> focusing multiple times on a Sunday law that is to come. But we have steps that will have to occur before the Sunday law. If this is truly going to repeat Millerite history, and I believe that it is, that we are to recognize that we are coming soon upon midnight because 9-11 has already occurred. The symbol has been presented for us to recognize. Now, <clears throat> do we have a good understanding yet of midnight? We have been hearing messages since 2016, since seven years ago. We have heard message after message, representations that are helping us to refine our understanding of what midnight really is and what the symbol of midnight means. Each of these symbols should be saying something to us. So our question is going to be, how do we recognize them and how do we apply them? 
Now, does that, is, is there any question from what I've just said? So, anything else that we need to consider here? Any other point that we should add into this symbol at this moment? Okay. <clears throat> that will conclude my opening statement. So shall we close with prayer? Gracious Father in heaven, we have great need of you. We need you to bring these things to our remembrance. Help us to understand all that you have tried to teach us through your servants. Help us to apply that which has already been presented so that our minds may be open and ready to receive the truth that you would give us. Direct us today <clears throat> in these meetings. Help us and prepare us so that as we study, as we come before you, that we may be ready to share this message with others. Be with us now. Guide us through this day. For this we ask and this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.